Morning, it's early. Got a message here from a young bloke. I think it's a young bloke, not sure. Nick Ad19 through YouTube. Thanks for sending me the message, mate. He says, or she says, I'd like to see you do a review of your boat and everything on it, including modifications. Why not? Here we are, folks. So today what I'm going to do is obviously run over some of the add-ons that I've done to my boat and also modifications. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I've made a video about this previously. I'm also going to go through and do my monthly boat and trailer checks. I'll put the link in the description down below on where you can uh, download uh, these forms from if you want to have a crack at doing it yourself and also to the video I've made previously about boat and maintenance checks. So I'll start at the bow, the front of the boat, feeling very nautical today, and then work my way backwards and just cover off on the key features that I've changed or how I've modified my own boat. So the boat itself is a 4.4 metre Quintrex Renegade. It's a 2013 model. And one of the main reasons I went for this particular boat was it's a good entry level boat. Um, it wasn't too expensive, it hasn't got too much bling on it, so I could pretty much do what I wanted with it. And it's also got nice high sides on it, which are pretty important for me uh, with the kids, um, especially when they were really young, back about five or six years ago. Um, I didn't want them getting up on the front casting deck and being able to topple over the side. So those nice tall sides on it for me were very important. So one of the first things I added uh, to the boat was a 55 pound Minn Kota electric motor. It's got iPilot in it. The boat came made with the mounting plate for it um, and I just went elsewhere to find the electric motor for a good price. These things are absolutely incredible. Um, it's a 2013 version. It's been bashed, it's been abused. I've used it in all sorts of places. You can just see by the, the wear and tear on it how much it's been abused and it's still going strong. Um, I do a little bit of the maintenance myself, checking the uh, shear pin and the prop, checking the seals at the back. And the only problem I've ever had with it is the seal section at the very back needed replacing. And I noticed that when I started noting a, uh, a knocking sound and that happened after I'd run it into a few rocks a few times. Um, the shaft itself, super strong, super quiet, and the iPilot features just make it incredible. I honestly cannot imagine fishing without an electric motor nowadays. I very rarely use my anchor. I deploy my anchor mostly when I take the kids to the beach, just to keep the boat on the beach. Um, and I use the spot lock feature on this, I don't know how many times. I think, I think the Evinrude's got about a thousand hours on it. This thing would have easily 10 times that. That's how much I use it and how much I depend on it. Second thing would be the addition of a sander up at the uh, front casting deck. This is the 788 CI HD Hummingbird. Um, I originally had it on the side console and then when I upgraded the head unit there, I moved this one to the front. Um, I run uh, Hummingbirds, they're, they're fairly, fairly old. 2013 uh, but they still do the job strongly uh, this one basically just draws via a cable it draws the data that it requires off of the main head unit and then there's a single transducer down the back so the head unit on the console is capable of side imaging down imaging and all that sort of stuff this one just gives me sonar GPS water temp and things like that and that's all I really need when I'm up on the front casting deck. Um, nice and easy to install and one cable to link it link it together. So these are the other add-ons I've made under the front casting deck uh, to power the electric motor and the front sounder. So I've got a 100 amp hour battery down here um, and that runs into this junction box which is the grey thing. Inside the junction box is a uh, 60 uh, amp rated circuit breaker, waterproof circuit breaker and the um, junction bar and the black, thick black cable here is running in from the main motor down the back and I'll, when we get down the back I'll explain how that works. Basically overflow from the Evinrude comes in and charges the front battery 
um, or just keeps it topped up basically while the main motor's running. Um, and then from the main, from this battery into the junction box, power then comes out and goes to electric motor and front sounder. Generally when I'm running really, really low on power, the first thing that I'll notice that starts to go is the front sounder before the electric. And on a good day, if I'm not running it too hard, so say I'm sitting on five or six, which is about halfway on the speed settings for the electric, I'll get a good six to eight hours running time uh, in a fairly strong current and wind. Uh, and then I charge this, um, I take it out and I put it on the 240 mains at least every two to three days. Um, but it does, doesn't take long if I, if I if I drain it down, I just switch the main motor on, go for a good run, and it draws off the, uh, the excess from the back motor, and within half an hour she's uh, ready to go again. Just some rod holders and a little basket I've added to the front of the side console. I find this basket incredibly handy uh, for hanging lures off, pliers, fish, you know, lip grippers, gloves, pretty much everything, so I really use that quite a lot. I don't use the rod holders that much and I'll explain why very shortly. Probably one of the biggest jobs I've done uh, modifying the boat was adding a rod locker. Um, I've made a video on this previously and I'll put the link down below. Um, I got the idea out of a Fishing World magazine. Um, and all it is is a couple of tubes, front and back, and just aluminium reinforcing in it and I can fit I usually travel with about six rods so I usually travel with about six rods sometimes four sometimes six and they all fit quite comfortably in that rod locker the other thing you'll notice is I've put tape on top so I've got these velcro strips front and back because I like to whatever rods I'm using at the time Basically, whatever rods I'm using at the time, I like to lie flat. I don't like anything standing up in the boat, basically. Um, when I get to a spot, I even lower the aerial down just to make it easier for when I'm casting. So, um, yeah, I, I don't like any rod tips standing up or anything apart from the one in my hand. Everything lies flat on the boat. Um, this box reinforced enough that I can stand on it and walk along it as well when I'm fighting a fish. Um, so I'll put the link in the description, as I said, if you're interested in how to actually make one of these. Um, but definitely the biggest and probably one of the better modifications I've made on the boat. I've also added uh, a couple of 12 volt charging points. And these again draw off uh, the front battery. There's a couple of USB ones and your standard sort of uh, cigarette lighter one. Oop, a bit of trouble getting that back in. And I, I mostly use these, uh, that's your 12 volt, I mostly use those when I'm running between point A and point B, so when the main motor's on, because um, that's then just trickle charging the front one, and I'm not drawing off too much power. Here's the main head unit. Okay. So it's a 898CHD side imaging unit. Again, it's getting a bit long in the tooth. I know there's a lot more out there nowadays that does a whiz-bang job. Um, but these two are just connected together nice and easily via one cable. And I use the side imaging and everything when I'm moving around slowly looking at new ground. And then once I hone in on something, I just move up onto the front deck. So that's just, I'm comfortable using it that way and it, it works for me. Another addition, GME radio. Um, as anybody who watches any of my videos will know, I'm quite safety conscious and very cautious out on the water. So I added the uh, GME radio in with the uh, big antenna. Okay, so we're down near, uh, we're at the back now, down near the transom. Uh, so we got the main battery here, cranking battery, and here's the switches. So basically what it gives me the ability to do is if I just use the, the um, starting switch, power will just come off the cranking battery. Uh, if I use the house switch and the start switch, it means that both batteries, front and rear, are basically being, being accessed. 
and then if I've if I need um, an extra boost I can use the yellow switch which basically means I can crank off both batteries simultaneously to the motor so the way things basically work is I just turn the two red ones on uh, the Evinrude the 50 Evinrude okay cranks off the rear battery starts up um, so once the Evinrude is running um, it basically tops up charge back to the cranking battery and then once it's full the overflow goes to the front battery okay which runs the electric and the front sounder and it's the way the switch and everything's set up um, it'll never allow once that goes flat at the front it won't allow the electric and the front sounder to draw off the cranking battery so the cranking battery is always kept fully charged for the main motor the only other things that run off that cranking battery are the um, is the radio okay I figure putting the radio connected to the cranking battery the cranking battery is always going to have the most power in it and the radio is uh, one of my most important things for safety so it draws power off that cranking battery and like I said if the cranking battery for some reason just gets old or whatever and loses power I can use that yellow switch to try and crank off both I've had this boat out in I, I generally aim for anything higher than 20 knots I just don't go out in um, mainly I'm getting a bit soft but I've had this boat out in 30 knots quite a decent swell up in Platypus Bay and it handles really really well so it's got a 50 horsepower Evinrude E-Tech again 2013 model on it I'd probably say I know it's rated to 60 horses and 120 kilos transom weight I'd say the 50 slightly underpowered I'd go the 60 next time however the 50 allows me to sit quite comfortably on 20 22 knots cruising speed and I really like the extra grunt it gives me to get out of the hole more importantly when you're going through swell and really choppy conditions and the boats going up and down and you've got to slow down and stuff like that the thing I notice about the Evan route in particular is when you need that acceleration you've got it pretty much straight away there's no real lapse at all when you hit the uh, when you need to push it forward and and punch through or get it out of a hole it performs really really well so I highly rate the Evinrude E-Tex and incredibly fuel efficient so I've got a 60 litre underfloor fuel tank and I generally get about three kilometres a litre out of uh, out of that so I usually bank on between 2.5 and 3 um, depending on the conditions direction of tide and wind and all that sort of stuff so that gives me a great amount of range almost you know 180 uh, 150 to 180 kilometers worth of range on that 60 litre tank which is really good so I hope that's what you are looking for mate uh, just a few modifications not too much the 440 Quintrex Renegade is a very user friendly well laid out boat to start with um, and these are just things that I've learnt over time just to refine uh, for the type of fishing that I actually do um, I'm pretty much up to the trailer now so uh, I've been ticking off the boat equipment and safety as I've been going again I'll put the link for these boat and trailer checks in the description below um, I might just cut it there as I get onto the trailer because uh, it involves bearings and stuff like that and that sounds like content for another video another day so take care Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you got any questions, hit the like button. Remember, if you could subscribe, that really helps me loads if you hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to pump out a couple of videos every week, so there'll be lots of regular content on there. Um, and if you've got any questions or you want to know about anything that I've done on the boat, just leave a comment below and I'll be sure to give you an answer. Take care.